Hey everybody, what a beautiful day. It is uh, about 75 degrees and the mugginess is starting to finally subside for the year. So uh, I just finished up grooming the farm, getting ready for these barns in the next couple of weeks. I just wanna show you how this place looks all groomed and then uh, I'm gonna take you over to the tractor. If you remember a few episodes ago, I was telling you that the tractor was overheating and I think I've figured out why. I'll show you that in just a minute, but let me show you the farm first. It is a full-time job keeping this place cut down. Um, I uh, really have a new admiration for farmers that that uh, farm crops and cattle and all the other different things they farm. We just take it for granted. We just think it's gonna be in the grocery store when we get there. I'm not even farming anything. I'm just trying to keep this place manageable. And uh, I'm finally getting it there after a year and a half. But uh, you just can't appreciate how hard the, the farmers work out there day in and day out, staying out uh, till the sun goes down, working by their headlights and, and up before the sun's even up in a lot of cases. So anyway, I'm just cutting grass and spraying uh, for weeds. So anyway, I got a new toy to help me. I'm gonna show you this new toy and then I'm going to uh, show you what we're gonna do to the tractor. I got some of my stuff moved underneath the uh, lean-to and uh, this thing is already a super nice addition. But here's my new toy. I got a brand new steel combi unit, uh, KM131R, which is the uh, biggest commercial unit they make. I got the uh, straight shaft weed eater, and then I got the pole saw, and then I got the articulating uh, hedge trimmer. So. Over here, when I was tearing down that fence, that old junk fence that wouldn't even hold in a chicken, I got all these trees and stuff growing up on the fence. And I'm gonna get after all these and clean, it's only this fence row right here. I'm gonna clean all this up. And then uh, I've gotta clean up the ditch out in front. After I get all this cleaned up, I'll be spraying it with Roundup so that I don't have to go around with a weed eater and clean up fence posts all the time. So I went to John Deere yesterday and looked at their brand new tractors. And their brand new tractors, they've got four radiators up here, three radiators, depending on what size tractor. But there's a gap in between them for airflow. And this is the radiator for the air conditioning unit. And it is bolted directly to the radiator for the tractor. There's no airflow in here whatsoever. So, while I'm not overheating, I am um, running hot. And so I've got to turn the air conditioner off um, because the temp pegs out. And then once I turn the AC off, it runs at about three quarter. So what I'm gonna do is, and, and I don't know if this is gonna work, but I'm gonna disconnect these two bolts on both sides. This is the radiator for the air conditioner. I'm gonna get a longer bolt and I'm gonna put a bushing right here, a one inch bushing in between here. And, uh, and space that out one inch. That way, that will allow me to get in between here to clean this with an air hose or a water hose or whatever, because right now I can't. And when you blow in the back back there and blow it forward, you'll get a little bit out of this hole right here, but um, not near enough. 
And so I just got done bush hogging, as I showed you. And I wanted to show you, this is, you know, lint and debris. And, and if you look at the radiator on the air conditioner, well, kind of hard to see. But if you can look through that screen, the radiator has got debris all on it. So I have got to believe that over the last 14 years that this radiator has got all of that dust and debris and dirt on the front of it. But the only part of the radiator you can clean is this top part. This little screen right here, that's the whole entire screen. It's, it's two, here's the bottom of it right here. I mean, it's two, three inches long. Um, it just covers the top that's open uh, that the um, air conditioner radiator is not in front of. So I gotta believe all behind here, it's just full of debris and there's just no way to clean it. I think it's a design issue from Mahindra and John Deere's got them spaced out. So I'm gonna, like I said, I'm gonna pull these out or these rather, four of them and see what kind of wiggle room I've got. I think it'll work because this is a flex hose right here and it'll flex and that's a flex hose right there. And I've got enough wiggle room in there. All the other lines are all rigid, but I've got enough room in there. I think I've got a, an inch worth of wiggle room in there. And if I don't, I can just get new lines made, but I'm hoping I got an inch wiggle room. So let's get these off and see what it looks like. If this is gonna be this easy, I'm gonna be amazed. I just pulled those four bolts out. One, two, three, four. The whole radiator dropped. I want you to look right here. If I can get you in there. Let me go over here on this other side. Well, look at all that debris. I know it's, it's out of focus, but well, where's the light? There's just tons of stuff down there. I'm gonna sweep the floor out. And, uh, what, there you go. It's just caked in there. Just tons of stuff. As I said, I was gonna sweep the floor out and dump it all on the floor and let you see how much is in there. But it looks like a rat has been going in here and packing that. But now you can see what I was talking about. I'm gonna put a spacer right here and then get a longer bolt and just put it right back in there. That way I'll be able to stick the water hose and the uh, air hose down in here and wash this thing out. I think that's gonna solve my problems. So here's what I got, a two inch bolt with a one inch steel bushing and that bolt on the right is a, a three quarter inch bolt. So this one's gonna stick through that nut plate a little bit more, but it's gonna be just fine. So it's all installed. You see the spacer there, spacer there. You can see all the room I've got in between there, which I didn't have before. So I've still gotta blow it. So we're gonna take it outside and blow it real good. And then um, we'll fire this thing up and ride around and see how it does. See if it's not riding in the three quarter hot zone and see if I can run the air conditioner without it pegging out. And here is some of just what I pulled out from this side and then pulled this out from over here. So there's a mess in there. Still is. I took these two pieces of foam out. They went up either side of it as well, but they were they were um, obstructing the flow. They were going up right here and I pulled those off because I want clean airflow going through there. Well, that appears to have fixed the overheating problem. I uh, ran it for right at an hour and it never got over 50%. It got right to 50%, as you saw. So um, I can't believe it was that easy. Uh, time will tell if it uh, continues, but um, preliminary is, is that it, that's what the problem was, was just an airflow issue and that stuff getting clogged up in there. So 
Um, I like the results. I'm satisfied with it. The, uh, the AC clutch is um, making some noises, so I think there's going to be a, an AC compressor in the future. But uh, it's definitely low on Freon. There's a sight glass on the dryer, and there's foam inside the dryer, air bubbles. And so, uh, like I said, when the clutch comes on, it makes a squealing noise. So I think there's going to be a, a clutch here in the future. But uh, anyway, I appreciate you watching. Hope you learned something, and we'll see you on the next one.